Okay, I'm going to take you through several of the intro to VBA practice examples that you may have done in class with your instructor. If not, or if you're sick, here we're going to go through them all right now. So, to work on this material, start by going to My Educator, and I'm on VBA 3 Introduction to Macros, and you'll find if you scroll down a ways, let me scroll back to the top, scroll down through the study guide, through the introduction, we have all of these uh, intro videos on getting used to the VBA environment, introducing to macros, now introduction to actual VBA, then you'll see introduction to VBA practice files. So these are going to look very similar to the ones we just did, but simply give you more practice. So go ahead and download this Excel file, open it up, and you'll see uh, the first of three examples right here called input processing output. So you may have learned this model when we covered flow charting. If you're beginning a VBA problem and you actually don't know where to begin, you're looking for some way to decompose the problem down into some more manageable parts, remember or memorize the input processing output model. So here's a flow chart which you learned in the previous chapter. We start by asking for a price and a quantity. We simply multiply those together and then display how much they owe. So this problem involves collecting inputs, performing processing, and displaying outputs. All right, let's create this now. Alt F11 to open up our VBA editor. I'm going to create a new module. Make sure to click on uh, your VBA project, VBA day one examples. Don't insert the module on any add-ins if you have some like I do. Make sure that your cursor is selecting one of these sheets, but we're still going to insert module. Don't forget to add option explicit to the top. Now we'll begin with sub and Let's call this simply calc. Okay, to help you remember, let's create some comments in the code, which you would have learned in a previous video. video. Uh, collect inputs, perform processing, output results. So everything we do is going to fit into one of these three steps. First step, collect inputs. Well, let's create some variables. First of all, to store the inputs in. Dim quantity as integer because there'll be no decimal places. Price as currency because it will have decimal places. Okay, next step, let's initialize these variables by collecting the values. I'm going to try and let you see both things at once here. All right, here we go. Now in this case, we're going to collect the inputs from designated cells on the page. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put a border around these. Uh, actually, let's do all borders. And we're always going to refer to cells B3 and B4 for uh, these values. So quantity equals range B3 dot value price equals range b4 dot value okay let's test our program so far f8 or if you're on a mac command shift i as soon as we hit that we begin with the first line and it automatically recognizes our dim statements and says we see that you have two variables here uh, one called integer one called currency uh, they're both uh, currently set to v uh, set to zero F8 again, and it simply moves me to the first line where there's going to be an assignment. So again, an equal sign means we're assigning the value of one thing to the value of another thing. And we're always changing the value of what's ever on the left of the equal sign to whatever is on the value of the right. So when I process this next line, quantity, that variable, should change to whatever the value is of cell B3, which in this case is 5. So F8, and you can see down here in my locals window the quantity is now 5. Hit F8 again and price has been changed to 2. That's the end of the sub so far and we're done with only step 1, collecting inputs. So again, when you're not sure how to begin a problem, break it into these three steps. We've now completed step 1. Let's go on to perform processing. This one's fairly simple. We simply need to uh, perform the calculation for total. Before we can do that though, we need to declare a variable to store the total in. Now there are shortcuts and ways we can get around that, but since you're just starting out, let's create a variable for every uh, single piece of data we want to keep track of. 
So I could just simply dim total right here. Uh, what variable type should be a currency because we're going to be including uh, potentially change. Um, however, it's up to you. You could also simply grab total and put it up here in the same line up here when we're collecting inputs. Totally your call. Some people might prefer to have all dim statements before everything anyway because it's technically you're not actually collecting inputs when it happens. Um, again, totally up to you. I kind of like that idea to keep track of all my variables at once. I'm going to keep them up here before I do any uh, initializing of inputs or performing processing. But again, as long as you've uh, declared the variable with a dim before you use it, you're just fine. So now let's use it. Total equals quantity times price. That's all that's required for processing. So let's go ahead and test our function, F8 or Command-Shift-I on a Mac. F8 again. Uh, all of our variables are zero. As soon as we hit F8 now, it's going to process that line that's currently highlighted. Quantity is 5, price is 2, total is 10. Last step is simply output Output the results. Here it says display. Typically display means put the results back on the screen you're using. Um, a prompt means uh, pop it up in a message box. So since it says display, let's make a box right here. And I'm going to use a thick outside border. Right align the text. And let's output the results to that exact spot. So to do that, I simply take one of these assignment statements where I set a variable equal to a range and reverse it. This time, I'm setting a range equal to a variable. In this case, B, what is it, 5? Yeah. Equals the variable total. One last time, F8. Price changes down here in the locals window. Sorry, quantity changes, price changes, total changes, and now Whoops, let's give it a bit more room. There we go, $10. Our function works. Last step as usual, let's insert a button, uh, excuse me, developer, to run our function. Put it right here. It's going to run the function calc. OK. Let's call it calculate. Click off the button. Don't hit enter. Click off of it. And then now we can click the button. Oh, and of course, as usual, it can't execute in break mode. I hit OK, and all that did was basically it means I have to hit stop right here to get out of break mode. So let's put in something different. 16, price 2, calculate. I can make this to 10, calculate, and we work with decimals too. OK, that's the end of example 1. Let's go on to the book net pay example.